As we heard there, Kiev again wants to deploy the military against anti-government forces in the east. The reason being two bodies found in the region on Tuesday. The EU is urging Kiev not to use force in the east, but Paulus Lear reports. Two dead bodies have been found, one of which is believed to be that of a local politician belonging to the Prime Minister's party. The acting president blames anti-Kiev forces for the killings and is using them as a reason to launch a military crackdown. Now, this is in violation of the Geneva Accord that was agreed to last week. But as it is, that accord is already failing as a dozen local administration buildings here in eastern Ukraine remain occupied. It has been expected that there will be a crackdown down for quite some time, so it doesn't come as a surprise. The last time there was a military operation, it failed as the tanks sent by Kiev landed up siding with protesters. The bodies were found not far from where I'm standing, which is in the town of Slavyansk, where yesterday three people were buried after a deadly shootout on Sunday. Local residents are convinced that those responsible belong to the right sector. In a separate development, the Pentagon has approved the sending of some 600 troops to Eastern Europe. It says that this is in response to what it calls Russia's incursion in Ukraine. The Kiev government has also extended a hand to Ukraine's special police force, the former Burkut members, in what many say is a desperate move by Kiev to retain control of this country. Paulus Lea RT, Slavyansk, Eastern Ukraine. Now, as you've just heard, people in the east of Ukraine are preparing for the crackdown. Journalist Graham Phillips reports from a small town of Izum, where the military has been stationed for over a week. As Kiev attempts to quell protests in the east, it's now focusing in the city of Izum, which is located strategically in the border of the Kharkov and Donetsk regions, where the protests have been the strongest. To enter Izum, we had to pass through a checkpoint set up in the city limits. Ukrainian troops stationed here are stopping every single car entering or leaving the city. They say they're looking for people they call separatists. We were cleared to enter, but not allowed to take out our cameras at the checkpoint. We did, however, manage to take a few discreet shots of the area. And here's what we saw. The Ukrainian military is amassing in the outskirts of the town with helicopters monitoring the situation from the sky. And there's been a build-up of military vehicles in a field near the checkpoint. Soldiers were out on patrol. They noticed me filming. I had to make my escape since they didn't want anyone pointing the camera at them. Now, Izum is a town of around 50,000, some 50 kilometers from Slavyansk, in a very different situation as we saw the other day, because what we have here is the Ukrainian army massed on the border. Now, I shot some footage of them out there with clear signs of a heavy military buildup on that side. We also report of the Prami sect and the National Guard here in the town. I've been speaking to a few local people to ascertain how they feel about this situation currently in Ukraine. We are against integration into the EU. We want to be closer to Russia. There is nothing for us in the EU. Our factories are working on contracts from Russia. So we rallied today, but the authorities didn't even come out to talk to us. We also heard people express concerns of possible violence erupting in the city. We approached one of the Ukrainian soldiers stationed here. I do not want to take part in any military action, because Russians and Ukrainians are brothers. I have relatives in Russia. With the city of Izum virtually surrounded by the Ukrainian army, people here are holding their breaths as troops could get the order to move in at any moment. This is Graham Phillips here in Izum with RT.